Hi, I'm Glenn and welcome to my boat project. I'm inside the cabin of my 1971 Aquarius 21 swing keel trailer sailor. It's very similar to the Aquarius 23, so if you have one, this is the same exact design, it's just a little bit shorter. And it has one window on each side instead of two. That's about it as far as this part's concerned. So, if you recall from my first video, when I got this thing home, first thing I did was tore out all of the furniture with a Sawzall. Pretty rough and dirty, cleaned it as much as I could. What I've done since then is I ground out all the old tabbing, done lots and lots of vacuuming, and now what I'm doing is removing the hardware. I'm gonna fill most of the holes of that hardware. I'm gonna grind down some rough patches on the floor here or the, you know, the bottom of the cabin here, which is the hull, and cover it all in primer. I'm really wanting to get this thing sped up, but I also want to take my time and do it right and do it at a comfortable pace for me because this is part of the fun, really. I mean, I'll be sailing for the rest of my life, but the refurbishing, once it's done, it's done. I'm drilling a four and a half inch hole here so I can access the pin. I'm going to put in a waterproof hatch on both sides, but I note that it's a four and a half inch hole I'm drilling for my four there inch hatch. So be sure to check the actual size of the hatch before you go and believe the numbers that they say. Pro tip, when you're working with epoxy or especially thickened epoxy and you might have some extra, have an area prepared so you can apply it. So I'll keep adding to this as I have extra epoxy. I have lots of holes to fill. All right, here's my boat project. Boat project Aquarius. In many different, my hatch cover that I built. There's a fan blowing air into the boat. It's like it's circulation. This cover is nice, it keeps the direct sun off, but it also acts as a heat trap, so it does get a little bit warm in here. All kinds of things going on simultaneously. The clothes pins are just to keep it from falling over. They act as a little base. And what I've been doing is I glue and then I clip the clothes pin on just to hold it, and then I usually rotate around and use two clothes pins to go do 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 make my way up. And after making a couple of these, I realized I don't need the clothespins. They stand up pretty much on their own, or a little dab of glue will hold it up. First, I used the template to draw the line. I round it out, uh, kind of pretend I have a batten, and then I cut along the line for my piece of wood to fit perfectly in the boat. <laughs> This is the back side of the instrument hole I filled. Looks great on this side. But I did a really crummy job on this side. And I knew it at the time. I was just sort of thinking I was doing it right. And by the time I realized I wasn't, I was too far into it. So I have some areas to fill. I didn't grind this side down or not enough, and I didn't pack the gaps with thickened epoxy, I just put over the weave. And, you know, the other side worked out well, but this side is not good, and it's not very strong, so if any anything hit this right here, it'd probably break through pretty easily. So, I am going to spend some time to fill this, and then I'm going to be reinforcing the underside of the cabin top in this area because I'm going to put my main sheets there on that side and that side of the cabin top. So I want to reinforce this fiberglass. Okay, it's done. I didn't I didn't film this because you guys know what it 
looks like. Sanding, sanding, and more sanding. However, the sanding didn't really do much for that paint. The grinder worked a lot better, made a huge mess, but this paint is quite tenacious. This sort of uh, green paint on top of some thick primer. Um, there's areas where it just chips right off, and then there's other areas where it hangs on tight. All right, so I spent a day in here sanding and then filling and fairing. And I used the fast hardener because it's like 40 degrees. And I figured that would still give me time to get around the entire cabin, but it didn't. It got really thick and goopy and I couldn't spread it any longer. So I had to abandon before I got all the way around. So next time I will use the slow hardener. And then after it's in, I will put on my heat lamps to set it. That will give me maximum control. There's still a little dip right there because it sagged. So I'm going to sand all this now. I've got some runs to, to sand over. So the thin thickened epoxy I used worked great for filling in the cross hatches here, but not so great for staying put on the vertical surfaces. So right there is a bulge or a dip. So that was trying to be filled in, but then, it, and then another one there, but then it sagged. What I'm trying to do is minimal work. I want it to look decent in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be as smooth as the hull. But I also want it. I also want to make sure that when I walk in here, I don't feel like vomiting by how crappy it looks. So that's what I'm working on now. Ah, oh boy. Lots and lots and lots of sanding. Not everything. So if I had gone over this with that high build primer, I would be sanding everything. This is my bent plywood. I made an entire video on how I made these. And now you can see where I put them and uh, how they open up the space in the back so I have more room. All right. So boat work has been pretty... Um, uh, not very consistent over the winter time. I picked up some projects in my house, around the house, uh, discovered woodworking and wood carving, um, and you can view all those on my next project. Um, but now, here we are at the end of April, so I need to get this thing rolling. All my projects at home are done so I can focus all my time here on the boat. And I've made a big, I've made a dent on the furniture. I have a lot of the I'm calling them ribs, the cross sections, the supports for the bench or the lazar, not lazarette, the bench, the bed, the seat, the settee, whatever you want to call it. It's the place where you're going to park your butt or lay down. And it will have cubbies in there. And of course it needs cross support. So I've been able to make those. I use really thin wood, less than a quarter inch. And I, reinforced it and preserved it with penetrating epoxy. Now, the hard part was finding what I call the seat line. Now that's analogous to a water line, except it's where your seat goes, where you sit. So the top of the benches, I want them all to be level. Uh, initially, my boat was not level. The side to side was level. So I was able to do that and I didn't want to make the front to back level because it was just a little more effort. Um, and I had a really hard time finding a consistent seat line without being able to use gravity as a reference. So I leveled the boat. Now I have a laser level and it has a lockout position. So my idea was I could make a point where I wanted the seat to go and line up the laser level with that, and that would be a consistent line all the way around the boat. But even though that may have worked, it was just a little bit too complicated for the likes of my brain. So I leveled the boat, 
And then I could use the laser level with its pendulum gravity leveling effect. And that worked a lot better, but that wasn't, I skipped a step in telling you all this. I tried using my three foot long bubble level and it's plastic, so it, it bends a little bit. And when the boat was level, what I did was I put my level here, my three foot level, on the line I wanted to be the seat line, and I bent it along with the shape of the hull and drew a line all around the boat. And for some reason, that didn't work right. I could compare it to where the previous seat line was. And, you know, one thing I could have done was just gone like two or three inches below that all the way around. But it wasn't easy to tell exactly where it was. I can find the two inch wide strip where it was, but knowing exactly where the wood was was not quite as easy. Nonetheless, I could have done it. That would have been okay. I thought the laser or the bubble level would have worked, but it tended to drift downward. So I got the laser level out once the boat was level and I drew my line again. Now that was difficult in the first place because I didn't have a tripod or anything to hold the level at the right place. Um, but here I, I did find a solution. I found this little tripod and a piece of ferrous metal that I clipped onto the tripod and then the laser level has magnets. So that was able to stick there and be infinitely adjustable. So now I have it. And if you look here at this vertical brace, not only is the top of it gonna be supporting the seat, but it is also attached to the cockpit sole and that will give it some more stability that way. I put that nice three degree bevel in the wood. Had I not done that, it would have tipped inward, which I guess still would have been okay. Um, it wouldn't have been vertical, but it still would have been strong enough. But you know, I didn't want that. So um, so it worked out. My my angle that I cut worked out pretty well. All right, time to crawl in my cave. So I don't particularly like working in here because it's so small but it's got to be done. So right here is going to be the seat line. So my job right now is to put a piece of board up here and that's going to separate the trunk or the lazarette from the inside of the cabin. Because if I'm going to have a can of gasoline here, I don't want that smell getting in the cabin. Also, uh, you know, water tightness to help. So, Anyways, that's my job now is a bunch of tabbing. I have a vertical here to do, and then one here, it's only gonna go as high as the seat line. The back one will go all the way up, but this one goes to the seat line. So every two feet, I'll have what I'm calling a rib, whether that's the proper name or not. And then I've got another one here. So we're looking at four feet from where, right about where the camera is to where I am right now. And then I have a few more for the front, but I also have these verticals that go lengthwise that I can tab in now too, if I have time. So let's get started. I don't know how much I'm gonna show you as I'm doing this because there's not a whole lot of room in here for a camera. Nope, I did not record any of that, but I can tell you what I did and you can see the finished product or semi-finished. I used cheap two dollar a tube caulking to hold all the boards in place and then i'll go through and i will tab over it on both sides Cutting fiberglass strips.
This is the framework for the kitchenette and the head. It's dry fit now. And once all the pieces are in place, then I will glue them together and glue them to the boat with thickened epoxy. Here's a clear view of that four inch watertight hatch cover that I have to give access to my centerboard pin. Here we are, all glued together, and by the way, I use Cabasil to thicken my epoxy. So shortly after the glue dried, I went and pretended to use the things, the kitchenette and the head, and then I discovered something that I can't believe I've never heard anybody mention before in any of the re, uh, refurbishing of this boat. And I can't believe the manufacturer did it this way. But I quickly realized that, and this is a little bit crude, but where the head is, it's really hard to drop trowel while in a hunched over position like this because there's only about four feet between the deck and the overhead, floor and ceiling. And on the other side of the boat, right where the head would be, if the head was on the starboard side, there's a hatch. So if I moved everything to the starboard, starboard side, I would have a hatch right over the head. I'm so glad I thought of that before I got too far along. So I <laughs> cut out all my pieces. I tried to cut just the glue, but in one place I went through the side of the boat, in the hull and the uh, top sides area. So it's not a, a below the water line, but it's still gonna get wet from time to time. So I had to patch that, but that was the only damage I did. And I just flipped everything and put it over on the starboard side. I didn't record me doing any of that. It was a hard decision, but I'm already glad I did it. Here I'm cutting out the panel that will act as the wall between the kitchenette and the head. And this will be the side wall for the head. Pretty close. I think it'll need a little bit of trimming, but it's pretty close. To get it to fit right, it took many iterations of marking and trimming, marking and trimming, marking and trimming, probably five or six times before I got it to fit nicely. Such a mess. Stuff everywhere. Can't find my rasp. I've looked in every box twice. I've got a 
all this mess here, swamp cooler, penetrating epoxy, regular epoxy, polyester resin on that can. Prepping for tabbing. And once I started grinding, I was getting into it and it was making a huge mess. And it's just as hard to clean up a little huge mess as it is a big huge mess. So I figured I might as well just go for it and grind down anything else that I think might need to be ground down in the future. Even if I end up covering it with primer, it's still going to be easier. That primer is still going to be easier to get down to bare fiberglass than the current paint and primer that's on there. And then I plan on keeping my batteries in that area to keep the weight forward. So what I did here for this support is I cut a notch out of the top and then glued a piece on both sides to give it the vertical strength. And then I will glue those in place. And over here where they joined, my intent was to do kind of a a mortar tenon, I guess not quite, but a notch. So it has a little more support forward and back. Um, but it took a lot of time and it doesn't match. It's a really, really, really bad at angles. So I think what I'm going to do for the rest of these is simply cut them to meet in the middle. Once again, there's my angle. <laughs> okay, so these are the seat rests like this. Back there, I'm gonna put them horizontally across there. Let's see if you can see it over here. There we go. I did it there in the very back. I did some tabbing up at the top. That's what you see the runs. And I use dowels to go through here, and then I'll drill holes to match back there. And I hold it up against that, the plywood in the back. I can use the dowels as a reference, and that'll hold it from sagging down, because there's no way to clamp it. I was thinking of having somebody on the other side to drill a screw through, but this way I don't need another person. And here I'm cutting a new kitchen panel because the first one I did, I had the ugly side showing. So now I'm cutting it with the pretty side. I'm using the first one as a template so I don't have to do as much fine tuning to get the final fit. Mosquitoes got caught in the epoxy. And um, this is because I set it on my little workbench that was not clean. So I got bits of paint and epoxy from previous jobs. Not a good job. Kind of splotchy too. Need to go over that again. All right, that's it for today's video. I know I'm not done with the furniture. I will finish the rest in a later episode. I don't have a whole lot to do. There's definitely a lot of tiny fine tuning and beautifying things that I could do, but those aren't priorities for sailing. What is, is putting the seat tops on and at least some of the drop doors in the little cubbies underneath the seats and mounting the winch in a nice sturdy location. I don't know that I'm gonna put the kitchenette counter on yet. I am gonna finish the head, that's a priority, and I'm going to prime the entire inside, not the wood, but all of the fiberglass. Then I can start mounting the deck hardware. <sighs> you probably didn't realize this, but the first shot of me talking, introducing this video was shot last July. 
And here we are in June the next year, June 2023. And it's hot again. I intended to have all this done by now because I want to get out in the, in the water. But as it would be, life happened and I got into woodworking. I did some furniture re refinishing projects. I spent time with family. And there were some cold, rainy days. I just didn't want to go work on the boat. So here we are. And the grinding of all the paint from the inside of the boat was supposed to happen during the winter. But I kind of forgot, kind of just ignored it, um, hoping it would go away. Um, but it didn't. And man, that stuff is really hard to get off. Now, the problem is some of it flakes off. I can pick it off with my fingernail, but other stuff you have to grind on it with the angle grinder for quite a while to get it off. And it's really challenging to push as hard as you have to move around, especially overhead. Uh, my shoulders and neck seized up a few times doing that and really sore over, over the night. But <laughs> so I didn't get it all off. I just want to get it smooth without pits and chips in it. That is really my, my main plan to do that before I prime. So if I were to do this project again, I don't know what it costs, but I think I would have the entire thing soda blasted inside and out. So anybody who's doing a project like this or thinking of taking it on, that would be a really, really, really big time saver. Huge, huge time saver. It would be worth the money. So even a couple thousand dollars would, would make it worth it. All right, I'm going to come out with my next video as soon as I can so you can see what I do to finish off the interior. And then another video will go on the top side to do all the rigging and the hardware. And then I go sailing. Woohoo!